All right, hello and welcome to this Intro to Clipfolio webinar. My name is Neil Hirsch and I am the training specialist here at Clipfolio. And the aim of this webinar is to give people who have uh, sort of little to no idea about Clipfolio, uh, what it does or how it works, a general introduction to the platform and how it's used. So if you're curious about Clipfolio and you're just getting started, this is definitely the right place for you. So we all know that manual reporting is painful. It's repetitive and it takes up valuable time. Manual reporting gets especially messy when there are multiple spreadsheets that are floating around the office. Wouldn't it be nice to present data in a clean format without the confusing mess of disconnected tools and files? So Clipfolio strives to make that happen. Clipfolio gives your team visibility into your most important metrics and KPIs. So what is Clipfolio? Clipfolio is a cloud-based app for sharing important data and metrics using custom real-time dashboards and reports. Clipfolio helps you work smarter, drive results, and stay competitive. So how does it work? Well, first things first, you have to connect your data. And luckily, Clipfolio has a number of solutions for that. So we have over 300 integrations and APIs that are already set up to go. So these connections are already established. We're looking at things like Salesforce, Shopify, Facebook, and Twitter, uh, Amazon Web Services, all these programs that you're probably using on an everyday basis. If you don't find the program that you're using in this list, we have other options as well. So you can do a custom API call, you can connect to an SQL database, you can manually upload your data in spreadsheet or CSV format, or even uh, use Google Sheets or, or, or OneDrive with Excel to host your data online. So once you're connected, the aim is to build a dashboard. And a dashboard is something that answers all of our key questions about our business, and it's backed by data. And it's sort of all in one place on, on one dashboard. And this is going to be how we're going to track our goals. We're building a dashboard out of Clipfolio's two building blocks. So on the left-hand side, we have clips. And a clip is, a, is, is flexible. It gives us complete control and customization over how we visualize our data. So this is our completely customizable, completely from scratch way to visualize your data. We also have power metrics. And a power metric is a more interactive, um, it, it stores data history and it provides unlimited views in our data and it's quickly. This is sort of the plug and play option. Once you've built that dashboard using clips and power metrics, the aim is to share your masterpiece. So we can produce published links, uh, PDFs, images, scheduled email snapshots, published private links. We have a mobile app. We can embed things on a website. Uh, you can add users directly in the platform, put it up on a TV wall board, share via Slack. Any means that you need to share your dashboard, we have available to you. So without further ado, let's hop into the platform and see how it works. So what I have here is a, is a complete tabula rasa. This is a blank Clipfolio account. This is what you would see as soon as you start your trial. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to build a couple of different things using the building blocks, and then we're going to consolidate it all onto a dashboard. So right now we're in the clip section. Uh, we're going to get back to that in a minute. But first, we're going to start with the power metric. So what pops up immediately is sort of a sample dashboard of power metrics. Um, you can see some of the different visualizations that we have on offer, things like whole numbers, bar graphs, line charts, uh, pie charts. What I'm gonna do is go over to the left-hand side here, choose the plus button, and I'm gonna create a power metric from one of our pre-connected data sources. So I'm gonna go with one that most people know, and that's Google Analytics. So if I click on that, I can see our pre-built templates for information that we can pull from Google Analytics. Um, for this example, I'm going to use page views. Hit next. So here it's asking me to connect to my Google account. Now I've already done this. If you haven't already connected your Google account, what you would see here is sort of the generic Google login window. It'll ask you to authenticate your account, do your two-step verification or whatever other needs you have. Um, I've already done that, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. It's just going to ask a couple more specific questions about the information that we want to pull from Google Analytics. So our analytics account is Clipfolio. I'm actually going to pull data from our support site, support.clipfolio.com. Let's get it. So just like that, it has 
built a power metric for us. We haven't need to do any building. We haven't need to need to, to assign anything. It's just gone ahead and built it. So let's click on it and have a look. So what you see in front of you are our support.clipfolio.com stats from August 29th to September 13th. So if I'm looking at it, I can see uh, you know, various the trends in traffic. And on the right-hand side, I can see the various options that I have for exploring this. Now, uh, we have our visualization types at the top, the style of those visualization types, how things are aggregated, um, how things are segmented, what our time range is, uh, any trends or comparisons, and then filtering at the bottom. So let's play with a few of these and see what we can build. The first thing I want to do is make this data a little bit more dynamic, and I'm going to segment it by channel grouping. Cool. So it's pulled these stats out of Google Analytics. I can see my direct, my organic, my referral, my social, other, and email. Uh, I'm going to try a different visualization just to clean this up a little bit. So there's a stacked bar chart. And I'm going to put it sideways just because I think that's fun. So I like the way that looks. I'm comfortable with the time, the daily. I like that. Uh, I'm not going to add any comparisons at this time. But I think, you know what, maybe I'll add a filter. So maybe I only want to see my traffic uh, coming from the United States. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm taking one of our other segments, the country segment, and filtering it by that segment. So now this is reflecting just the traffic that's come in from the US. All right, um, anything I want to change? You know, maybe I got a little crazy with that sideways graph. Stack the bars going up and down again. Cool. So just like that, using Google Analytics data that we already have, we've built a power metric. So let's head over to the clip side and let's build something from scratch. So going over to Clips, it says, let's get started with the dashboard. Obviously, it wants to help me connect to the data that I care about. Um, for this example, I'm going to build a new dashboard. And I'm going to add a clip directly. So you see a pretty similar look, at, look out here um, with the pre-built connectors that we have. Um, I'm going to actually build a custom clip so we can do it from scratch. Well, how nice of it. I am ready to build my first clip. Now you can see in the bottom right hand corner here too, we're seeing our, uh, our chat box pop up. So if I needed any help in this process, I could just click here to start chatting and I could speak to an expert, but I'm just going to go ahead and go from scratch. So we're in the clip editor now, and this is our tabula rasa. This is where we're going to do our building. On the right hand side, we can see the various components that we can add to a clip. Uh, user input controls, spark lines, pie charts. Uh, for consistency and simplicity, I'm going to bring in a bar line chart and just drag it into the middle. Now, currently, there's nothing to visualize. You can see an arrow in the bottom left saying, let's add a data source. So let's do that now. You can see, actually, the page views data source that I set up with Google Analytics just a minute ago. But I'm going to switch over to example live sales data. Now, this is something that you have in your account as well, if you want to follow along. Now, down at the bottom, we can see that data is just populating at the bottom of the screen. So we have to make a, a, a few decisions here. What is our series going to be? And what is our x axis going to be? So for our series, this is going to be the number that we're tracking. And I'm interested in tracking our revenue. So I'm clicking at the header there. And I'm getting a whole bunch of things populating in here. Now, obviously, I don't want just revenue for revenue's sake. So on the x-axis, I'm actually going to say, I want to see my revenue over time. So all we've told it to do is our series is our revenue, and our x-axis is time. And so it's taken each of these transactions on each of these days and each of these times and plotted them on a graph. Um, it's pretty noisy, and I'm not sure that this is particularly insightful. So I'm actually going to go into the properties of our date and see what we can do to change this. Now, the biggest culprit here is there's just a whole lot of stuff happening. And that's due to the fact that our display format for our date is year, month, day, hour, minute, second. It's super duper granular. So I'm actually going to go in here, and I'm just going to narrow it down a little bit. So I think I would rather see a monthly revenue. So I'm just going to choose August. Now, this is saying break it down just by month. Now, again, we're still categorizing every transaction in here. So 
the thing we're going to need to do is group our repeating labels. What this is going to do is take all of our August things and put it together, all of our July things and put it together, May, June, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's go and clean this up a little bit. Um, for the series, currently it just says untitled in the corner here. Um, we can do better than that. So let's find our untitled and we're going to call this revenue. And we got a big untitled at the top of the clip as well. So we'll go to the bar line chart itself and we're just going to give this a name. So untitled is great. So this is, well, this is revenue by month. Perfect. And you know what, just for fun, uh, we're going to go in and just override the default color get rid of that boring blue, and I am feeling purple today. So let's do that. Cool, revenue by month clip, saved. Now you see here, one of the sharing options is beginning to show, and this is, do I wanna share this clip directly with other people within my organization who have accounts in Clipfolio? It's a pretty good option, but I'm gonna show you the other sharing options in just a few minutes, so let's save that. And there we go. I have this new dashboard on the left-hand side here, and I've added my first element to it, the revenue by month. Now, we've created a power metric with our Google Analytics data before. Um, let's have a look at sort of the from scratch creation of a power metric now. So I'm gonna go to the power metrics plus, just like I did before. And instead of searching for a service, I am going to use an existing data source. And I'm gonna use that same example live sales data, data source that I used to create the clip. So confirming that it's the correct data source, absolutely. You can see we're just gonna run through these steps on the left. So instead of like the clip where we're bringing in the individual elements and we're assigning all these sort of granular things, this is just gonna ask us to sort of choose from a menu of options. So uh, I'm gonna to stick to tracking revenue because I think that's the most important thing from this data source. And now it's gonna ask me for those segments. You remember with Google Analytics, it had country, it had channel grouping, uh, device. So how would I like to organize my revenue? I'd like to see revenue by product. I'd love to see revenue by customer type. Um, let's do sales rep and country. So we'll add four segments to this and hit next. So it's asking us to select a date column. We have a date column. We're ready to go. Clifolio is pretty good at finding this. Uh, you shouldn't really have any issues with defining the date. So we're gonna go ahead and just hit next. And then sort of what type of data is this? Um, it's transactional values. So bang on, Clifolio has picked the right one again. And Clifolio will, will pick the right one the majority of the time. So let's hit next. So our power metric has been automatically given the name revenue based on the, uh, the metric value. It's formatted to currency, which is cool. It's taken that from the data as well. And it's asking us sort of what's good. Is trending up positive or is trending down positive? Um, obviously more revenue is good, but if you were doing something like cost, then obviously trending down would be better because we wanna lower those costs. So looks good, let's hit save. And we're back as it builds. Into that familiar power metric view. Now you can see that we have a really long time range here. This goes from 2017 all the way through 2019. So let's go through and let's edit this a little bit. This is just a straight line up, which is obviously a great thing to see for our business's sake, but it's not particularly telling, other than telling us that our revenue is increasing year by year. So let's start by modifying the date range. Now we've got a number of different options here. Uh, we can even do a between, which is uh, defining a specific set of time, whether it's you know something you don't find from one of these options. I'm going to choose the last six months and apply. Okay, that's a bit more of a different story, but I mean, it's still not a particularly informative graph. So I'm going to go over here and I'm gonna switch our monthly to weekly. Okay, now we're starting to get a little bit of action. Uh, again, we're going to play with the chart type, but first let's add a segment and let's do customer type. Cool. All right, that looks awesome. 
Um, let's play with all of these different sort of chart types here to see what the obvious differences are. So we have this, which is, uh, this is going to be a cumulative sort of graph over time. We've got all of our different customer types broken down into, into different sort of squares based on their size. Um, we can just see the raw data. Cool. Uh, just a flat number. We can see sort of the star-shaped one here. Uh, we can see pie chart. We have a pretty even distribution. There's that line chart again. Uh, we'll go to a bar chart. That's that stacked bar that we had with our Google Analytics, but I'm gonna go with the heat map. Cool. Heat maps are kind of neat because they show uh, sort of really visually the effect over time. So I like this. Um, I have the option again to filter it. Um, so if I wanted to filter it by just American options, again, I can do that by customer type by product. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave this as it is. I like the way this looks. Awesome. So we've built two power metrics, our Google Analytics sessions. This is by America and then our revenue from our example live sales data. I'm gonna head back over to that dashboard that was created with our clip, and I'm gonna to start to add some things to this dashboard. So you can see we have the option to add clips, add power metrics, uh, play with our layout. So I'm gonna add those two power metrics that we created. So I'm gonna add Google Analytics page views, and I'm gonna add that revenue power metric. And you can see that it's gone back and reverted to the way that it was before. Now this is because we, we want to explore power metrics and power metrics. If we're in our Google Analytics sessions, we may want to play around with how these things, just so we can get that insight and we can get that data. When we're building our dashboard, we might have different needs. And so let's go ahead and configure these so they suit our dashboard. So we've got revenue by month. I'm just going to move this up here so it looks a little prettier. And I'm going to make it the same size just for fun. And let's go over here to revenue and let's configure it. So uh, let's go back to that heat map. And we're going to resegment this into customer type again, because I really liked the data that, that gave us. And again, we're in yearly, which is not telling us the best story. So let's do monthly. And let's reduce the time frame to the last six months or so, just so it matches the other. Cool. This is kind of becoming our last little while dashboard. So we can see our reseller distributor and direct customer looking good, revenue by month looking good. And let's tell that story using our Google Analytics page views. So I'm going to go back to the bar chart because I like the way that looked. And let's segment it by channel group. So I can see where our traffic is coming from. Awesome. We're starting to tell a story now. We're starting to add things together to, so if somebody were, if I were to send this to somebody, they could have a glance at it and sort of glean the information that I'm hoping that they glean. Now I'm going to add our revenue power metric one more time. That's the best thing about power metrics is that you can really just have a whole bunch of different versions of sort of the same data set. So we have revenue over here that's split up by our, our customer type. Let's go into revenue here and let's just make something really simple and we'll just do top line revenue. Perfect, so we got just a nice number. I like it. So just like that, we've used power metrics and we've used clips and we've built a dashboard that tells a story. And so we need to now share that story. So let's explore the different options that we have to share this dashboard um, with the people who may want to know. So first things first, let's give it a better name than new dashboard. I'm just going to call this our sort of bird's eye dashboard. This is a bird's eye view of our business and the important numbers to us. Now let's go back in and we'll go into our sharing options here. And you can see the various options that are available to us. Now, share with users, we talked about a little bit before when we built our clip. And sharing with users would then share this dashboard with other people within your company who have an account within Clipfolio. So on the left-hand side over here where I see bird's eye, if someone else, would, someone else within my organization were to log into Clipfolio, that wouldn't necessarily be there. So if we share with users, it's basically us populating the left-hand side of their Clipfolio view with the dashboard that we just created. 
Now, the other option is to publish a link to a dashboard. Now, this is pretty powerful and pretty cool. So this is someone who is not necessarily within Clipfolio. But we can give them a URL to visit this dashboard and see it live. So dashboard name, theme. I'll actually go back and show that because it's kind of fun. So uh, right now we're in the slate. And if you go to light, you can see a different light. I really like the dark mode. I think it looks super sharp. Yeah, I definitely like the way that looks. So when we go back to our sharing options and we go to publish the link, let's make sure that it's dark. And um, we have a few sort of uh, options on how we're sharing this link. So what is the visibility is probably the most important thing in this pop-up. Uh, is this a public and available via search dashboard? So is it Googleable? Is it findable? Um, I think for our purposes, we're looking at revenue, and this is not necessarily something that I would want people to just stumble upon. This is internal numbers of our business, but perhaps you would have a use case where it would be beneficial to have it Googleable. Um, our section option is to have it available to anyone who has the link to this dashboard. Now, this is pretty difficult to find. <laughs> uh, you would have to have the link to do it. It's not going to show up in your Google searches. Um, the preferred method for something like this, which has internal information, would be to anyone with a link and the password. So I'm going to set a password on this and say hello, hello. And this is going to be the password. Someone will need the link and that password, hello, hello, to access this dashboard. So let's publish that. Now you can see here is the link here that is generated. Um, let's test it. Let's see what it looks like. Well, will you require the password? So I'll type that in. Cool. So this is a live dashboard. It's going to update as frequently as the data that you have in Clipfolio will update. And so if someone has the link to this and the password to this, they can bookmark it and they can have it available just within their browser. So that's cool. Publish links. I don't think we actually need to publish that. So let's look at the last sharing option. And this one's pretty cool too. Um, we can email this dashboard. And what's neat about the email is that it's just a snapshot of it. So this is not a live dashboard like the published link was. This is just a PDF or an image taken at that moment or at a specific moment in time and sent via email. So if you want to send a Monday morning report, a Friday afternoon report, weekly, monthly, whatever it is, you can, you can do that. And you can set up recurring emails to do it too. So let's set up that email snapshot. And you can see, who am I sending bird's eye to? Pop in their email address there. Do I have any notes? And you know, what's the format, PDF, or image? And is it on a schedule? So frequency, maybe I want a weekly Monday at 9 AM in whatever your time zone happens to be. Let's pick, uh, oh, let's pick South Georgia. Perfect. So now I've set up a scheduled email snapshot of this dashboard that I can send to people. Send to email groups, whatever it is. So we've gone through, we've built two different power metrics, one from scratch and one using our preset Google Analytics page views connector. Um, we've built a clip from scratch using our data source here. And uh, we've put them all in a dashboard and looked at how we're sharing that. So from a bird's eye view, that is how Clipfolio works, and that's what's possible within the platform. So you might be thinking, you know, I'm really excited to get building. I'm really excited. I, I think I have a grasp on this, and I'm ready to go. Or you might be thinking, oh, no, I'm going to need some help. <laughs> and if that's the case, then uh, don't worry. Clipfolio is here to help. So if you're excited to get down and dirty and get started, um, you saw the live chat that popped up in the bottom right-hand corner. That's going to be available within your account. And so you can pop in and ask, ask for advice and help from our experts at any time. Um, we also do onboarding calls. So uh, when you're just getting started, you can, you can hop onto a call with one of our experts and sort of get pushed in the right direction. But if you feel like this is something that maybe you're going to need a little bit more help with, then we do have experts available to help. So our Ninja Services is an at-cost consulting service uh, from our internal portfolio experts two to four hours monthly of interactive sessions. And what this is, is tailored training and building that's specific to your needs and your team. So you're hopping on a call with one of our experts. Um, we're researching and getting ready and we're helping you sort of 
by the hand built the things that you specifically want to build. This is not general information. This is specific to you. The other option is to take the building directly out of your hands and use something like our partner network. Our partners are awesome. They're all Clipfolio experts who are uh, really, really good at building dashboards. And so think of this more as like a contract. So you'd be contracting one of our partners, uh, guiding them along the way, but they would be doing the majority of the dirty work. So both of these options are available if you're feeling like you might be a little overwhelmed. If you are ready to get started, then uh, we have other resources that are available to you too. So if you have any questions, uh, if you need a hand, reach out to support at clipfolio.com. Uh, we also have two Twitter handles, uh, our Clipfolio proper, and one called Clipfolio Helps, which uh, is available for questions or any inquiries. And uh, best of all, we have our support.clipfolio.com site, and this is our help center. So we have a whole lot of different resources on there from instructional videos to uh, webinars like this one, to our knowledge base, courses, certifications. It's really your one-stop shop for any Clipfolio help. So with that, uh, I wish you luck. Please feel free to register in some of our other webinars, check out our how-to content, or just get your hands in, get dirty, and start building. So thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Take care.